Hello, my name is Avery and welcome to episode 2 of Nintendo Oddities and today we will be discussing the Game Boy Micro. Um, now, before we get into that, I would like to say thank you so much for 7 subscribers. It is a fantastic milestone. Uh, I'm really grateful for all of you guys and if we can manage to hit 10 by the end of next week, I will start a random number generator with the choices between 1 and 500, and if it gets 363, I will give one of you 50 cents. So, good luck. Uh, all of you will be entered, as long as you're subscribed. Um, and lastly, I got a question from Michelle that said, Whoa! And just to answer that, um, pretty much no. Uh, pufferfish can't live below 5,000 meters under the sea. Their bodies just aren't made for that type of pressure. So I hope that answers your question. I hope you learned something and let's just go into this. I'd like to start by just talking about some history and then I'll go into an unboxing of this, uh, what you get if you buy it. And then I'll go into some prices about if you're really looking into getting one of these special 20th anniversary edition Game Boy Micros. So let's begin. Um, the Game Boy Micro is one of the worst selling Nintendo consoles of all time. Uh, and it's a pretty simple explanation as to why. So it was released in 2005, right alongside the DS. This is the DS Lite. It was the original DS, but they had essentially the same function. Now, I'm gonna ask you a rhetorical question. If you had the choice to buy a $200, which was this retail price, Game Boy Micro, I think it was about $200, versus a slightly cheaper DS, this can only play Game Boy Advance games, and this can play Game Boy Advance games and DS games. What would you buy? Okay, well, if you didn't answer this, you are too cavalier with your finances for my liking, but you do you, I guess. Um, now, this came out, was horribly advertised, and was released at the same time as a much better console. So clearly it was doomed to fail. That being said, I do believe that this is the definitive way to play Game Boy Advance exclusively games. Now, uh, I'm going to just give you a brief little history. This was the final Game Boy Advance to come out in the line, the first being the original Game Boy Advance, then the Game Boy Advance SP, and then they had two versions. This was AGS-001, so this was frontlit. This is AGS-101, so this is backlit, and then the Game Boy Micro. Um, these could all, by the Game Boy Micro, play Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and original Game Boy games. The Game Boy Micro cannot, but to talk about a couple of the differences between each of these guys, these both have headphone jacks, and the Game Boy Advance SPs actually don't, which is kind of interesting. I really have absolutely no idea as to why, but, um, I guess if you're into listening to Game Boy music on your headphones, don't buy the SP. But really, in general, uh, this doesn't have a backlit screen, as I shall now demonstrate. So you really can't see it in the dark whatsoever. I'm not sure if the camera is really picking that up. Hey, you can see my face. <laughs> but yeah, um, whereas these two had slightly different screens. This one is backlit, which makes it a lot brighter. And this one is frontlit, which makes it a lot dimmer. So if you had to choose between the AGS-001 and the AGS-101, 100% go for the AGS-101. I used to collect console variations of the Game Boy SP in general, and then I realized that the 001 was just far inferior to the 101, especially if you're playing at night. So I pretty much just quit collecting the AGS-001s and went straight to the 101s, but they didn't make too many variations of that, so it's kind of difficult to get them. Um, and just to compare these two to the Game Boy Micro, I want to show you the difference in backlighting and the difference in graphics. Now, these are all Pokemon games, so it should be a little bit familiar. If we look at this, first of all, very dim, pretty mediocre graphics. This one is a lot brighter, uh, as you can see. And finally, we have the, the Game Boy Micro. Significantly brighter and way, way better graphics. Mostly just because the screen was so small, but in general, I would say that this is probably the definitive way to play Game Boy Advance games. Uh, not only does it have a fantastic backlighting system, its graphics are just far superior to the Game Boy Advance SP. Um, now, if you 
would rather play Game Boy Color games or Game Boy games, but you don't want to buy a Game Boy Color or an original Game Boy, don't buy this. Just buy the SP. You really have no reason to buy this Advance. There's absolutely no reason to get it whatsoever unless you're just collecting. In terms of functionality, this is just an inferior version of the SP-101. So yeah, I would 100% go for the 101 if you have the choice. But if you just want to play Game Boy Advance games, the Micro is 100% your best bet. So with that being said, let's just jump into the unboxing of the Game Boy Micro. So I took the charger out because... I'm actually, I mean, I'm playing on this, so I use it. But it does come with a charger, and it comes with a little wrapping cord thing for the charger. I'll put that off to the side, though. Uh, other than that, this box is in actually pretty fantastic condition. Uh, there aren't any creases. The corners are all really sharp. It just says this thing. I don't know what this is. I got it used. Somebody was a doctor. <laughs> I'm joking. It's probably the street. But anyways, uh, yeah, it still has a plastic seal on the side. This one's been broken, obviously, because they opened it. But, uh, or they opened it. But yeah, so on the inside, let's just take out what we have besides the charger. A bunch of inserts. And you have this little thing. So, there we go. Now, it comes with a little like felt baggy. I think you're, well, you're obviously supposed to put this inside, but I really don't know what, who would ever use this. The whole point of this is to make it fit in your pocket and you don't really need a felt bag to come with it. But I guess it's a cool like little tidbit of, I don't know. It's kind of cool, I guess. Anyways, um, and let's just go into the inserts, all of the inserts that should come with this console if you buy it complete in box. Uh, so, there's, of course, a Nintendo Power insert, which I always think is pretty entertaining. <laughs> uh, they have these in a lot of the Game Boy uh, Advance games or the GameCube games in general. They're really promoting Nintendo Power at the time. But I think this shirt is just ridiculous. Who would ever wear a shirt that just says Game Boy Micro, especially if you're like the age range that this is advertising to? I really have no idea. Nowadays, 100% I wear that. But like, I don't think I'd subscribe to Nintendo Power as a 12-year-old to wear a shirt that just says Game Boy Micro on it. It's kind of entertaining. Um, next, you have the catalog of Game Boy Advance games. I absolutely love going through this as a kid. Uh, it basically just tells you every game that you want to get. I have most of these. There's a couple I don't have, but yeah. Really good advertising in these books. They actually make it look quite entertaining. Uh, yeah. A WarioWare Twisted, fantastic game. Really, really, really like this game. Uh, yeah, so next we have register your thing to power up. This was like a precursor to a Nintendo Power, um, which was, or not Nintendo Power, sorry, Club Nintendo, which was started like in 2008, I think. So like three or four years after that, after this came out. But pretty much register your thing and you get free stuff. Oh yeah, uh, there's an instruction booklet correction. There's one thing I have to talk about. This does not have swappable faceplates, specifically the 20th anniversary one. The other ones do. Um, now this one is modeled off after the Famicom, which was released in Japan 20 years before this came out. And so it does not have a swappable faceplate, as you can see. Um, and they issued a correction because in the instruction booklet, it says that you, it has changeable faceplates. This one does not. So obviously they didn't want to reprint the entire thing. And they just said that. Here's the instruction booklet. And then you have the health and safety precautions booklet. So that about does it for the unboxing. And now I'm just going to talk about prices really quick. So I bought this about two and a half, no, way more than two and a half, like about six months ago at this point. And I think I got it for around $250, which was I'd say the low range of what they were going for at the time. I saw a lot going for 300 and 350 or so. But um, now they have gone up significantly in price. I'd say the, the special edition is probably between 350 and 450 complete in box, if not more. Um, but I personally, if I were to be collecting now, would never settle for more than 300. 300 would be my absolute max complete in box. If you're looking just for the console, I would probably not go for more than 125 for the special edition and 100 for the regular. Um, it is a fantastic one, but you can really get these SPs for like 80 bucks and they play more games. So if you're not looking to collect, I would really just stick to the SP. Otherwise, yeah, 
I really wouldn't go for more than 100 on these. Um, so yeah, that about does it for the Game Boy Micro and everything about that console that I know. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, please let me know. Uh, I'll be listing some new things on eBay very shortly, so feel free to check that out. I'll always put those links in the description. Um, now, a lot of people seem to have very short time uh, attention spans, and I doubt anybody has watched this far into the video, but if you have, I'd really appreciate a subscribe, I mean a like, or if you subscribed. Uh, ask me any questions below, I will choose out a question in the next video to answer or a comment to respond to, I think I'm gonna make that like a thing because it's kind of fun uh, responding to the last question. It's very, it a very important question to, to answer. Um, so yeah, if you have anything else, just let me know in the comments and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll be making this whenever I have free time pretty much. It's just really fun for me. <laughs> I have no one to talk to about this anyway. So yeah, hope you guys liked it and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.